the assassination of Ninoy Aquino. Sixteen soldiers were given double life sentences for the murder of opposition senator Benigno Aquino Jr. and the alleged hitman Rolando Galman. With the sentence, the public expected the convicted soldiers to finally confess that they were responsible for Ninoy's murder. But the story would take a different turn altogether. In 1990, Monsignor Roberto Oliguer was assigned as chief Catholic chaplain of the National Penitentiary, where the convicted soldiers were jailed. Unknown to many, Monsignor Oliguer had been asked by Manila's influential archbishop, Jaime Cardinal Sen, to pry the truth from the jailed soldiers. As Monsignor Oliguer befriended the soldiers, he began hearing stories about one particular convict who was distraught. Around 2 o'clock in the early morning, they heard sobbing, crying, and it was Sergeant Martinez. Air Force Sergeant Pablo Martinez was one of the 16 soldiers convicted for Ninoy's murder. Yet he was the only one with no clear role in the whole operation. In fact, no one knew why Martinez was in the airport at all. He was not part of the boarding team. Instead, he just stood under the service stairs while Ninoy descended to the tarmac. Early morning, they can hear him awake and sometimes sobbing, crying. So I told Sarge, uh, Captain Bautista, I think it's the conscience not working. So I called him for a meeting. So they had a meeting. In the meeting, Martinez made a stunning revelation. It was all a military conspiracy, so well compartmentalized that most of his fellow convicts were never let in on the plan. It was a simple plan that hinged on just one man. On August 19, 1983, two days before Aquino's arrival, Colonel Romeo Ochoco, then deputy head of the Aviation Security Command, summoned Martinez to the Carlston Hotel in Manila. There, Martinez states, he was introduced to Rolando Galman, the hired gunman who was assigned to kill Ninoy Aquino. The orders given to Martinez were explicit. Make sure Galman kills Ninoy. Otherwise, Martinez was told, kill Ninoy and then shoot Galman as well. Martinez was a boxer. He said, he's really a tough guy. He would fight even his officer. The mind was clear that uh, if uh, Galman would hesitate, he would be the one to do the job. And what's the job? Kill Galman and kill Ninoy. On the day of Ninoy's arrival, Martinez and Galman left the Carlston Hotel for the airport. Martinez easily gained access inside the airport because he was a senior Air Force sergeant. For the same reason, he was able to smuggle Galman to the foot of Ninoy's plane. There, under the service stairs, Galman and Martinez waited for their chance to complete their mission. Meanwhile, several feet above them, the boarding party entered the airplane. Sergeant Claro Lott and his team fetched Ninoy from his seat and told him to follow them. The uh, sergeant, Claro Lott, told him, we must be in a hurry. Somebody's trying to somebody uh, who will kill you. So the, the base got killed, no? And, and they hurried down. The group emerged from the airplane into the boarding tube. But instead of going to the airport terminal, the soldiers led Ninoy out a door onto a service staircase. As Ninoy and his escorts descended the stairs, other soldiers blocked the view of the TV cameramen and reporters. On the tarmac, near the foot of the stairs, a SWAT van full of soldiers waited to bring Ninoy to his jail cell. One of the soldiers in the, 
in the Swatban, we're looking at, at the Aquino going down the stairs, and he saw Sergeant Martinez probing Kalman to shoot because Kalman hesitated. He even saw Sergeant Martinez probing him with, with the, seems that signaling, quiet, go ahead. And Kalman was just standing there. So Sergeant Martinez pulled out the gun, then Kalman ran. Shot. The initial feeling of the soldier, what, what's happening? What's happening? There could be enemy forces around. So some of them scampered left and right. Covering, covering. Like most of the Filipinos and the rest of the world, Monsignor Oliguer had always believed the soldiers killed Ninoy on orders of Marcos. Deep in my heart, I hated the soldiers. Of course, just like the, the sentiments of the, the majority of the Filipinos, they just thought that it was Marcos, period. The convict stuck to the same story, that Galman shot Ninoy. In an interview with a local network in 2007, Martinez says the other soldiers knew nothing of the plot to kill Ninoy. Because the truth is that ay hindi po militare ang bumaril kay ex-senator Aquino. Ang tagal-tagal naming magkakasama eh. 24 taon kaming nagkakasama. Kaya nagkanaga po na ako sa aking sarili na totoo nga. Na wala na silang alam. Na kayo lang ang may alam talaga? Kaya ako lang ang may alam. Monsignor Oliguer believed the soldier's version of events. And this was what he reported to the man who sent him to probe the soldiers in the first place, the influential Manila Archbishop, Jaime Cardinal Sen. Your Eminence, I think uh, I have discovered the truth regarding the death of Senator Ninoy. Who killed Ninoy? Kelman. Oh, you had been brainwashed by the soldiers. Would you like to be transferred to another assignment? In 1995, the country's biggest broadsheet began publishing the soldiers' version of events. The soldiers asked for a reinvestigation of the case in light of Martinez's new revelations. It would take years before the public would take notice. In August 2004, the public attorney's office filed a motion for a retrial. But in 2005, the Supreme Court denied the motion and upheld the conviction. The sentence was there to stay. Galman must have been a hired killer. I can believe that maybe he was part of the plan, but I don't think he killed my father. Now, whatever uh, Martinez is saying, there may be some truth in it. Like sometimes we're given half-truths, I really don't know, and honestly, as I said, we, our family believes who the mastermind is. In 2005, Martinez revealed an even more startling bit of information. The mastermind, he said in an affidavit, was businessman Don Ding Coango, an influential and powerful marketer.